Hey guys, welcome back to Warner Farms. So today is Sunday, December 9th. It is just about five o'clock and we just quit working on the building for today. Uh, we've been mostly working on the office side. We did a couple of things over on the garage side, but the garage side is pretty much done. Ugh, pretty much done. Let me go click the light on over here that way you guys can see. Mostly we've been uh, working on getting uh, this side prepped for uh, insulation, which we got about half the ceiling ready and we actually started insulating that side. Basically what we're trying to do is, is when we put drywall in the ceiling, uh, we can't just walk across on top of the ceiling on top of those two by fours, just so that we can run electric through there and drop wire down for the lights. So what we were working on today was, was taking those oak planks. Those oak planks, we've had those for I don't know how many years. Uh, I think, I don't know how we ended up getting hooked up with this. This happened like, I don't know, when I was real young. Uh, we had a whole bunch of logs, like pretty fairly decent sized logs. And we got a whole bunch of them sawed up in the planks and we have them all up above uh, in the hay mow up in the barn. And uh, we brought them down today. There's various widths on them. And uh, we were working on making some platforms that uh, we could just lay across and slide between each of these four bays, I guess you can call them. So each section has roughly uh, close to 10 foot, two 10 foot boards um, in each section. And they uh, we kind of put some two by fours or two by sixes, depending on what size we grabbed. Mostly just two by fours for uh, bracing. Uh, you can kind of see that so that they don't fall off. Um, we were going to double stack them, but then we realized if we'd run uh, two by fours across the middle here, uh, just a strand along the middle there, uh, it increased the bracing on there and the support and we wouldn't have to double stack them. Uh, we have tons of these up there and it's not like we're uh, gonna use these for anything else really. So we'll just end up keeping them up there. Um, so once we got that done, uh, we had to go ahead and screw um, some two by fours or two by sixes up across, uh, across the top over there. That way we could hook uh, the nine by, the nine foot six inches or nine foot eight inches, whatever that, board is on that end it's nine foot something almost ten foot um hook it over onto that board over there up against the wall or up against yeah the wall up there on the end of the rafters so there's four of those up along there in each bay that way that one can hook there and the two by fours right there can act as almost a hook also for or a rail also for this nine foot eight inch or whatever it is board so we can slide those between this bay and we have it set up for each and each bay basically. So there's, I guess you can almost say eight bays. Um, if I swing the light around this side, we haven't done anything yet. Um, as you can see, that's where the two by sixes would go or two by fours, whatever we decide to use over there. Honestly, I don't remember at this point because we've been so busy with the insulation. Uh, not only uh, on that ceiling, but we actually have the whole entire garage insulated, which I'll swing a ladder over there and show you guys that. But basically this whole side needs to have the platforms made. And uh, before we do that though, uh, we wanna knock out some more insulation. That way we don't have to drag all of that out of the way. That way we have probably about a third of that gone. That way we don't have to uh, drag all of that over that way um we've got some of it up and out of the way so uh basically the plan is tomorrow is to insulate up to uh uh that platform right up there that farm builders made for us for the attic and uh work on sliding that insulation over finish uh this side over here um putting up those platforms insulate the rest of this and basically that'd be it for tomorrow. Uh, on Tuesday, we're gonna work on building the walls um, because we still have to build this whole entire wall for the office. 
that divides the office and the meeting room area slash kitchen and make the uh, walls for the bathroom. We're not entirely sure if we're going to insulate this interior wall really because really that would only be if we're wanting to soundproof this better, which we haven't really decided. I mean, we may, we may not. So I'll go ahead and swing a ladder over there and show you guys what the top of the garage looks like. So I'll kind of do my best. I'll probably whip out my phone and turn on my flashlight up here to kind of show you guys what we did. Basically all day yesterday, we worked on insulating this and not too fun because there's not a lot of support up there for uh, uh, walking on top of the metal. So basically we had to, uh, if I can turn on my light here, we had to take those sheets of plywood down there, you can kind of see them, and uh, lay them on top of the metal and uh, just kind of slide around. That way we can kind of distribute the weight and not kink or dent any of the uh, ceiling in the garage, which we ended up popping out a couple of lights and when we were fixing them, the one snapped in but snapped out after we uh, snapped it in and ended up breaking a section of the light so we had to go back to menards and replace it and but yeah so we have this all nice and insulated actually i know some of you guys were asking me this uh on snapchat and instagram sending me messages when the in floor heat was going to be turning on or when we were going to get that turned on uh he actually was thinking he was going to try and make it out last week and he was kind of thinking towards the end of the week. He couldn't make it out though. So I'm thinking sometime this week he's gonna try and make it up or make it over here from Ohio since that's where they're located. Uh, Central, I think uh, Central Ohio, I think around Fremont, Fremont, Ohio, I believe. So uh, he's gonna try and make it over here and turn that on. And I'll go ahead and walk in the garage because actually the garage, like I was saying, there is lights in the garage. So they went ahead and got that all wired up. Troxel did, our local electrician. Um, they ran the conduit all to the lights and everything, so it looks really cool. Um, got the panel set up. Actually, uh, we bought the panel a while back and we just had them put it up. Uh, we didn't know if we were going to put it in the wall or leave it on the outside of the wall, and we ended up leaving on leaving it on the outside of the wall. Um, so basically right here, we actually had, uh, they actually ran conduit straight across here because they didn't know that we needed it dropped down here. So when we got back, I don't, I think we were, that day we were over in Leesburg getting some parts for the combine from John Deere. But anyways, when we got back, uh, we had them drop it down here because there's a whole uh, panel set up. Uh, I'm not gonna throw up the picture of it because it'll just be kind of easier to show you guys once uh, the N4 heat guy comes out and sets up his panel. I think he's gonna, I'm not entirely sure how he's going to do it. I believe he's just gonna lay up a couple sheets of plywood on the uh, metal siding here and uh, set up his whole panel off of that i believe i mean that's kind of how his setup was um when uh because he has a little demonstration set up in his office when we were out there picking up the crete heat panels that are basically underneath the concrete and where the pex tubing is laced so we actually had the vanity uh the vanity and the toilet and everything for the bathroom here, that's actually the broken light. This was the light that actually broke out right above me. Um, so you can kind of see, uh, we didn't realize how much this is gonna actually puff out. Um, we actually just sprayed this in a few hours ago and it actually it sealed up very good, but we'll just end up scraping that all off and uh, uh, putting up the trim. We actually have trim in the other room uh, for the door here. And I think for the other door as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we basically have that all done. Uh, we got the fridge over here. We actually, uh, long story about that, but that's actually our fridge going in here. And my aunt's fridge went over into our house, which 
Someday I'll explain in a later video about that situation. Um, and also a nice cabinet over there, which I'll surprise you guys was actually is going to go in that when the office is done. Because some of you guys locally know what I'm going to put in there. Some of my friends do. So, anyways, uh, yeah, so we're making progress. Um, not entirely sure what this is going to look like by the end of the week because I'm not entirely sure what our plan is for the whole entire week. All I know is for the next few days we're going to be working on this more. And I guess it all depends on what the weather does because we would like to clean the combine up and... <laughs> tear the chopper off and take the sieves and the chaffer out and pressure wash the inside of the combine because the inside of the combine has uh, a lot of dirt built up in it so uh, we got to take that all out and pressure wash the whole inside of that and get it cleaned out and yeah so and also pretty much clean up all the other equipment you know the uh, actually we got about 60 acres of Vertical tilling we might try and do tomorrow, so I might do a video on that, which you guys will see on Wednesday, because this video isn't releasing until Monday, tomorrow night. But, I got one other thing to show you guys. This came in the mail, oh, last week. So, the Phantom 4 Pro, which is sitting uh, in that box, or in that case, along with all my other batteries in there and my all my other bags, um, is getting a sidekick. Mavic 2 Pro, yeah. I'll go ahead and throw it over here on the picnic table and open it up for you guys and show you guys what it looks like. There it is. I'm actually really surprised on how heavy it is. I was actually expecting it to be a little bit lighter than what it is, but... I don't mind as long as it's portable is what it's designed to be really um, compared to my hand I mean that's how big it is um, later in a video I'll show you or in a later video I'll show you guys a comparison between this and the Phantom 4 which in all honesty I mean I think it's gonna be about the same I mean it has about the same footprint meaning how like spread out it is except that it's a lower profile I guess you can say um, Definitely. Same camera, basically, except this is a Hasselblad. Hazel, I don't know. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Hasselblad or Hazel... Yeah, I'm just going to call it Hasselblad. It's got a one-inch sensor, so basically the same as the Phantom, uh, except this is Hasselblad, and I think... I'm almost positive the Phantom 4 is just a Sony camera. Uh, 4K 10-bit HDR video, omnidirectional obstacle sensing, so... Basically, has sensing in all different directions, including on top uh, for obstacle avoidance, which the Phantom doesn't have. The only thing it does not have is the uh, sensor on top to sense anything above you. So that's kind of cool to have. So definitely going to be a plus for flying indoors. Uh, eight kilometer uh, or eight kilometer video transmission. Uh, Thirty-one minute flight time. So basically, the same as the. Uh, Phantom, except I believe it has a little bit better video transmission, which the controller has the standard antennas on this. I bought this from Drone World. Currently, I am, or I do have ordered the uh, antenna piercing uh, antenna upgrade. So they were supposed to do this when they shipped it to me. They didn't get it done because it's on back order. So eventually... It'll get done. I'm not entirely sure when. They said they'll ship me a return label and I'll ship it back to them. They'll do it and I'll get it back in like within five days, they said, hopefully. So, uh, otherwise, 72, 72 kilometer, kilometers per hour max speed. Um, basically, I'm, I don't... I don't know the conversion off the top of my head, but I'm thinking somewhere between 40 and 50 mile an hour. Um, so like I said, basically the same as the Phantom, but more portable. Now, you know, the Phantom, it's going to be more used now for basically what I've been using it for, except this is going to be able to go in the tractor a lot easier than what that can. Um, actually, probably before the end of the year, I'm going to, going to be sending the Phantom 
uh, out and uh, I'm not going to be having that for probably a good month depending on how long it takes them to install uh, the sensor. I'm having it modified. Uh, I'm going to have a sensor put on it. I'll explain that in a later video when I get that back. And yeah, so I'll be without the Phantom for about a month-ish depending on how long it takes. And I'll get a lot of flight time in with the Mavic 2 now. So I'm um, probably not going to be using my phone because the phone, actually these two swing out. I don't know if there's a picture of it. No, there's a better picture of the drone again, folded out. Like I said, I'll do a whole video on this between this and the Phantom. I mean, it's not going to be all that exciting just because, you know, most of you guys have already, if you guys are looking at this, have already seen comparison videos. And plus, I mean, there's technically on spec on the spec sheet, this is a better drone than the Phantom 4 Pro. But in my opinion, it's about the same, really. Um, but I plan on probably not using my phone even when I'm first flying this just because I'm going to, I have the crystal sky and I'll just mount it on here and use that. I plan on someday getting the smaller crystal sky on here. That way, you know, I don't have a big seven inch display on here and I could use the four or five inch display, whatever that size is and uh, mounted on here. So I will be setting this up as a backpack kit eventually, so I'll have, yet again, another backpack kit. I'm actually talking with uh, GPC, Go Professional Cases, about making a possible custom uh, battery case, which I have right down there. I think they're just gonna take the exact same hard shell case and put a different foam insert in here. So, and I have still yet to somewhat organize this a little bit better i mean it's fairly organized but i'm probably not going to do nothing until the office is done since it shouldn't be too long but i don't know we'll see <laughs> but anyways guys thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below like i said i do not know uh the video schedule really i mean last week i was just cranking out the videos just because you know, I had three videos sitting there I could do for Harvest um, to wrap that up and uh, just working on getting the building videos out. So mostly it's probably just going to be um, building update videos and anything that we do in the shop here. So um, anyways, we're going to hopefully try and get the sprayer out of here at some point. And I'm not entirely sure what we're going to pull in here next. I'm wanting to get the 7,000 uh, four-wheel planner in here to tear that apart and start working on that since I've been dying to work on that and get the other stuff on there and possibly some other things on here that I'm working on um, with another company. So that'll be cool. So I hopefully will know about that by the end of the month, hopefully. So, but anyways, guys, I'll end it here. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.